Now we have Alex Guskov from Actility talking about one of my favorite subjects, Laura Wan meets AI. Can you welcome him to the stage? Well, that's a lot of people. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I'm a bit surprised that this is such a, an interesting topic to everyone. AI, machine learning, IoT, you know, those are all big buzzwords. And when it comes to reality, when you ask people, what do those things do? How can those things come together? You get these kinds of images uh, and smart refrigerators, smart microwaves, what can they do? That's not exactly what this can do, what AI and machine learning can do in IoT. That's why I brought this presentation here, those slides, to tell you more about those. In this diagram here, we can kind of see where can AI be integrated into the IoT framework, where we have the network server, where we have the devices, where we have the gateways. Of course, the most obvious ones is, you know, having AI on the device side. This has been talked about over few years by now. And we can make those devices smarter. We can make those sensors. We can integrate AI right in them. The next would be the edge and app-based AI, where you can have the AI in the applications. Last but not least, we have, of course, AI for product development and marketing. And that's, my, that's the most interesting part that we'll cover just a bit later in this presentation. What I haven't mentioned here, you can also have AI on the LNS level. We can, for example, we, we can have, we can kind of tweak lower one, there are those scientific papers, and make it a bit more uh, fit certain, to fit for certain purposes. But maybe that's not the scope of this, uh, of this presentation simply because it doesn't, it, it's not lower one anymore. It becomes something else. So let's start those slides. Let's look at some of those devices that can, that do utilize AI already that are over there in the marketplace that you can look and feel and touch and see for yourself what they can do. One of the use cases would be vibration anomaly detection where of course we know that all things, when we want to measure vibrations, all things vibrate. But the question is when is this vibration abnormal? And there are sensors like the one showcased here that can help do this. They will learn the regular vibration patterns. And then when those patterns are disrupted, they will send you an alarm. You can see there are plenty of use cases for such sensors. For example, you can have, you can install this sensor on a bridge that has cars passing by. And then you will notice your regular vibration patterns. If you notice that the vibration patterns are disrupted, something else changes, you might have a problem with the bridge. There, there is a chance it might collapse. So you could use, utilize this sensor to monitor such critical infrastructure in transportation in other places and make sure that you are there before something happens. Next slides, the next devices will be all related to the cameras because image recognition is a big thing for AI. Seed Studio, who were right here just uh, on the previous uh, presentation, on the previous, uh, with the previous slides, they have a great sensor that can do this. When it comes to retrof retrofitting, for example, uh, electri electricity meters, That's pretty, that, that can cost a lot of money. But with sensors like this, that you train them to recognize those digits on those meters and send you over lower van the exact, the payload with those, uh, with the change of that counter. Instead, of course, you're not able to send the image, but these types of sensors help you to overcome these problems. Once again, plenty of applications. Train them to recognize anything you want, 
install them without wire, inexpensive, and opens up a whole bunch of new solutions and use cases for IoT. Another case would be people counting. Now, uh, before I started this job with, uh, uh, within the sales business development department within Actility, uh, I kind of didn't understand like why, what's important about people counting, flow, uh, people flow me uh, measurements. Turns out there is a huge demand in retail, in transportation, and there is a big problem that, you know, <laughs> there are sensors, the ultrasonic sensors that can measure people that go in, go out, but then you, can, you have to make them go in a sing single line. So this helps you to overcome those problems. You can install the sensor on the roof, I mean on the ceiling, and actually count all the people that pass. So imagine you have to calculate, you would like to see how many people go into that certain store in that retail space. You would like to know this information because your payments from that store are directly correlated to how many people visit it. So airport concessions, other places, this becomes super useful. Once again, another device of a similar fashion would be the occupancy sensor. It allows you to uh, see if the person is present, at, if there is someone present at the desk, for example. Um, at the same time, we cannot transmit images over LoRaWAN. Why this is great? Because there, there, there won't be someone who will hack in, who will get access to this, and will be observing you. So privacy is there. Once again, a lot of use cases where this can be applicable. So when it, uh, yeah, sorry, wrong name there on the slide. Uh, another good example is uh, waste, smart waste management. Right now, the, the, you can find sensors that will, uh, that will use ultrasonic, ultrasonic sensors to be able to detect the level of the trash cans, how, mu how much garbage there is in there. At the same time, there are new sensors coming up that will utilize cameras to do the same and will be able to give you a much better image, especially, especially if you consider all types of different trash cans, garbage bins that you have uh, around. So you can use just one sensor with built-in image recognition for that instead of relying on many ultrasonic sensors. Now for uh, devices and AI on devices, as a summary, where do they work? They work where you have, where lower one has limitations, right? You cannot transmit images, you cannot do telematics all that well, so that's where it's important, that's where uh, you can use those sensors, that's where they will bring you the most benefits. And of course, it will improve your accuracy as well. Now, what are the downsides where this is not going to work? Uh, not, not so much not, not going to work, but more the problems with this. The problems is the complexity. It's going to be hard to configure it. You need to provide a data set to the sensor for it to learn. This is, this is AI, this is machine learning, right? It works on patterns. So uh, another issue would be the privacy. Uh, even though you cannot transmit images, at the same time, we can train a sensor with a camera to recognize a certain face, a certain object, and maybe that person or that object does not want to be recognized. Now, moving further to where artificial intelligence can be used in the IoT framework. I'm gonna give a few examples of the existing applications, uh, solutions that utilize AI, and then I will go over some scientific papers published in different journals uh, that can give you some ideas how you can utilize I AI yourself in the IoT framework. One case for this would be the electric forklift management. Now there are companies that are investing into electric forklifts now, it's popular to go electric, the problem with uh, those forklifts is that you have to charge them. And in most of the cases, you cannot charge them all at the same time. You have to make sure, because otherwise your power grid will go down in your factory. So you need to make sure 
that they're charged at different times. And of course, at the same time, they have to be used. You know, there are people going out and going using those forklifts. So you have to somehow plan and schedule those uh, charging sessions. Uh, you have to assign the forklift to certain employees. You know, you have to know what is happening and when. And this is where AI can help, uh, can help you uh, and plan this for you. Another great thing about AI here is that when you have solutions like this, your end customer is not just the factory that has bought, bought those forklifts, but it's also the manufacturer of those forklifts. You can come to that forklift manufacturer and say, hey, you have great electric forklifts, but would you like to make them smart? And here is a service that you can sell based on our platform, based on our service. And there you go. So AI helps you to go after other business models as well. Uh, of course, a pretty obvious, obvious uh, use case for AI in the IoT framework would be workforce management. You would like to know if, for example, at the construction site, your workers are spending three times at lunch, going for 10 smoking breaks a day, um, and you hardly see them at work, so it can be quite common to have this. And being able to see where those workers are at right now is a good thing, uh, but at the same time, if you would like to get some suggestions, how how to optimize this process, right? Maybe the tools are not being utilized proper, properly, so that's why the workers are sitting there idle, they cannot do anything because the tool is somebody's el somebody else is using it. So platforms like Quanta, Quant AI from on-target technologies is trying to solve these types of problems, and those problems are pretty common because there are a lot of construction sites, and there are a lot of workers that are not doing their job. Um, another obvious one would have to be, uh, uh, would do with root, everything that has to do with route planning, with have, uh, having to uh, plan your routes. So for example, smart waste management. It allows you to, not on the, the IoT solutions for smart waste management allows you not only to see in real life the, how much garbage you have in that trash can, that garbage bin and stuff, but as well, what is the best route for the garbage collection service to go out and pick everything up? It, it can also give you recommendations if you see that there is this trash can that is too small, it gets filled out very, very fast, but it's so far away that you spend so much time just going out to that place, maybe you should replace that garbage bin with a bigger one. And this will make your process much more efficient, it will save you money, it will save, save money to the end customer. So these solutions are easy to sell because they have clear benefits. Another one, of course, would be smart water management. Water is a big issue in many parts of the world. You know, we're running out of it. Uh, take a look at Lake Mead, Arizona, New Mexico. And of course, we need to make sure that we are not using too much water. And the first thing that you would look after would be leak detection, you know, prevention of those leaks. When you have a citywide grid with water running through, it's pretty easy uh, to use AI to see when certain, uh, to see abnormal patterns of water usage. When you see those patterns, that means something's going wrong go out and check, send out a uh, message to the consumer, to the user out there, uh, and check if there is a leak or not. And of course, this can be combined with uh, regular leak detectors, actually that detect uh, liquids. So you, you, can pay, you, you can make uh, very nice solutions here. And the example here would be, of course, Oppenheim, a company from Belgium. Ah, this is a, this is a great one. So um, New Mexico State University has made an amazing project. What they did is they installed trackers on cattle. Now they, they figured out the way how to make sure that the tracker is positioned you know, on the neck on the top so it has view of the sky. We can do GPS there. But at the same time, what they did is in the trackers, we generally have the accelerometers built in. So we can see if the cow moves, how it moves. Now, they used this data, they 
they film the cows and they uh, check what do they do at this time you know, of the changes of the accelerometer. They are able to detect different patterns. They're able to say if the cow is grazing, if it's sleeping, if it's doing something else for patterns. Next is the best part, that if you see disruptions in those patterns, you know that something's off with your cow. It's sick, go and check it. The way this business works, you know, with ranchers is that they can have, one, you know, thousands of cows in their property. And with this AI, they, they, they don't see them for years, you know, they're, the, the cows are just roaming, they're grazing, they don't see them. So one year they come, you know, they're, they're like 50 cows are gone, you know, they know where they are, what happened to them. This way, uh, you can make sure your cows are fine, your cattle is fine, nothing happens to it. And you can get, the, you can get to the cow as fast as possible because you know its location. So this is, uh, this is a great example how you can use the simple data, such as accelerometer data, which is accelerometers, we, ha we have them pretty much in all of this, so many different devices, you know, trackers everywhere. Uh, the data is there. How do you use this? And this AI allow, allows you to uncover those correlations, those patterns, and, and see them with the same inexpensive equipment. So what, what, what this does is the value that you get from this solution together with AI is much greater than what you would have without the AI. Maybe you just know a few things, the location of the, uh, of the cattle, but now you can see if it's, if it's dead or if it's alive. Now I'll cover a few uh, slides here that um, are about some scientific papers that I found interesting. Uh, when you think how can AI help my platform, help my application, help my solution, I would strongly encourage you to go on to Google Scholar, on to other places to search for scientific papers that have already done those kind of demonstrations that this, this could work. Sometimes they will even tell you, like in the case here, what type of machine learning algorithm was used, uh, what type of neur neural network, if it's a neural network, and so on. They will tell you how accurate their data was, how much were they able to say, uh, how, how can this benefit the real world. And uh, here is a good example of this. Uh, so uh, the, the team here, they installed uh, humidity sensors, uh, pH sensors all across the fields and were able to detect how well the irrigation system is doing. If they're using too much water in some places, if they're not using enough water in other places and to forecast this later to be able to provide forecasts on the future irrigation. So once again, save water, save lives. Oh, this is cool. Um, RSSI location in lower one is one of the holy grails, right? We, we would love to have uh, simple $10 tags to be able uh, to use them to geolocate something. Now with RSSI, the problem, you can do this with RSSI if you have enough gateways, if, the, if, the architect, if you have like at least four gateways around it. So the problem is that the accuracy is just not there. You cannot use it for many use cases. But here's a paper. What they did is they take into account the weather conditions because this will affect the RSSI, the signal that you receive from the device. They put it into their model, into their machine learning, and this way they were able to improve the accuracy by 100 meters. In terms of how, how much effort does it take, right, to do this. You have the paper, it tells you how to do this, you take it and you do this. And straight away out of nowhere, your accuracy is 100 meters more accurate. Water can <laughs> save lives, but can also kill. So, uh, especially when there is too much of it. And uh, if you live in the US, you know it's pretty common to get those flash flood alerts and um, unfortunately, not that many of them come to be true, or I mean, that's good. They, it's that <laughs> they, they, they are false. But at the same time, we can improve those models of flood detection, understanding how the water flows, how much water we've got in one place, how much in another. And we see those cases 
we see those papers that prove that this can work and we can, we can give a better estimations, uh, be better predictions of floods uh, in specific areas uh, beforehand. So this helps to save lives from those floods. Uh, also a great case. Uh, you kind of have to think, you know, out of the, it, it's a good case that shows that you have to think out of the box. So uh, researchers in Belgium, I believe, or uh, Netherlands, Belgium, uh, they use RSSI levels to determine plant height. So they put the gateways in the, in the greenhouses. The taller the plants go, the, the worse the signal is. Based on that, they can say that, and of course, you know, you have, in Belgium and Netherlands, you have, you know, those huge where, uh, greenhouses, you know, they just cover the entire country. So you won't be able just to walk through all of them. So there is, there is a need for automated way of doing this, of determining when the plants are tall enough to go and do certain things. You know, where is lower one here? Turns out it's much easier to do, just use the RSSI with a simple, I don't know, nanotech that is like $10, $20, uh, a few gateways, and you get a huge coverage. Uh, once again, you, as you search Google Scholar, uh, it will really focus on those big disaster preventions. Uh, you will see a lot of solutions there. And this is, you know, it's easy to understand why. Uh, human lives, they're important. And we would like to be able to, pre to prevent those things, those disasters from hap happening. We would like to see uh, no, uh, no, no dead people, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, of course, lower one can help you to do this and, and AI can help you to do this. And there are so many ways you can use this. Now, as we finish with application-based AI, I would like to talk about artificial intelligence and, and how it can benefit marketing. And this is very important because right now I feel that there is a big problem in IoT and that prevents the mass adoption of IoT solutions. And this would be the fact that we cannot articulate all that well. Like we have all the sensors, there are so many platforms, everything is there, just take it and use it. But when it comes to the question, well, I have a sensor, I have, what do I do with a sensor in this specific vertical, in this specific case? How can I use an ultrasonic sensor in airports? How can I use ultrasonic sensor in a shopping mall? Where do I use it? And if you go to websites of different device manufacturers, right, or uh, the information is very limited. So we really have to think how those sensors can be used to achieve, to go after different use cases, to achieve new goals. And AI, will help you to do this as well. This entire presentation with all those use cases, uh, descriptions that you have seen for all those sensors, for all those applications has been generated by, mostly by AI. Uh, I didn't have to write much, uh, so thanks AI. Um, go out and try it for yourself. Ask ChatGPT, ask uh, Virusonic or whatever, there are so many of them now. Like, I have a factory, how can I use IoT in this factory, what can I do? And you'll be surprised by the results that you get. Uh, I've spent a lot of time, you know, going after different verticals thinking like, well, what can IoT do there, do here? And then I go out and I'm like, hey, let's try ChatGPT. And I was so surprised uh, what it could give me. Of course, it's gonna give you a lot of garbage as well. You won't be able to use it. But you have to understand what you're, what, what, you have to understand the topic. You have to understand what you're doing. But at the same time, it can come up with pretty interesting use cases. And this, with this example, I just wanted to show you how, when I mentioned that device manufacturers, they will say, well, we made a device and we, think that we can use it, you know, with uh, combustion engines, transformers, and things like that. And that's it. And I'm like, come on, somebody has to think over, like, no, there are so many more use cases. Who's, gonna, who's going to think about it? Integrators, they don't have time. They, they would like to have a solution that is ready to implement. Solution developers, uh, yes, but uh, not so much as well. 
So we, as an industry, as an ecosystem, we all have to work on this. We all have to think, well, how can we use this device there and there and there? Describe it, articulate this, explain. Do not expect end customers or big enterprises to think, hey, uh, that's a nice ultrasonic sensor. Um, now let me think, you know, where can I use this? You know, how does it work? They don't have time to do this. You have to tell them, like, look, you can put it here, you can measure the distance from this object to this object, and it will prevent those things from happening, and those things happen at your place pretty often, so you'll be able to save so much money. This is what they're looking for. They're not looking for abstract devices, abstract platforms. And this is where AI can come and help you as well. Um, ask AI, like, how can you use a vibration anomaly sensor in airports, uh, in seaports, and other types of transportation infrastructure in mining sector? And once again, you'll be surprised by the kind of answers that you're going to receive. To be honest, I think this was the last slide. Yes. So thank you so much. I hope this wasn't too boring. And... Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I think we might still have time for a short Q&A session. Or not, I don't know. Yeah, so um, you mentioned that the, uh, the, uh, the AI is happening on the device itself. So um, number one is, if you put this device on, um, on a bridge, how are you going to power it? Because if you are having an AI machine over the G GPU, you know, any of this stuff, it will be a power hungry. It will require also um, uh, some kind of um, a big memory over there. So how are you going to power it when you're putting on the bridge? Uh, uh, it's battery powered. Uh, it, it will last for, I don't remember the exact, so it, it, it's not going to drain all the power in a few hours, that's for sure. It lasts for at least a few months. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what are the hardware components, how it, it, it is done there. Uh, it can definitely uh, see the patterns uh, in terms of the vibration patterns, and then when there is, it learns those patterns, so it has a learning period, and then when this period uh, passes, you know, it just measure, do, does regular measurements. I think those measurements, I don't know, do we have people from Wateco? No, we don't. But I'll get you connected with people from Wateco. There is actually that sensor is, at, at the, is located at the marketplace. You can come and have a look at it. Yeah, I would be interested to know how about uh, how this compute even, if, even though that is going to use a, a, a little bit of the data, how the computer and storage is happening there on a power, uh, power uh, uh, battery powered. Same goes for, ca for uh, device, uh, for AI with, with integrated cameras, right, on those sensors. It, it still takes computing power to do image recognition to compare, but, uh, but this is possible. This is, this, this is here. Not on this a battery power. You know, we, we, we've had an experience with a lot of uh, cameras, not, not a battery powered. I invite you, yeah, to join me in the marketplace afterwards because we have both, uh, we have Seed Studio there, we have Milesite, we have the Bob with uh, smart assistance sensors, all of them are there, and I can get you connected with the people who can make them. Thank you. I think this is all. Awesome.